Hello and welcome. I'm Gem for Jessie James Beads. Today I want to show you how to make your very own bracelet using the root beer strand. I'm going to show you that on the board in just a second, but it's a beautiful strand with opulent tones. So here we have our Pantone root beer strand, absolutely gorgeous, full of richness and sparkle in equal measures and this is the piece that we're going to make together today very very striking using all bar one of the beads on the strand and completely achievable the first thing I'm going to do is de-strand my beads I've taken all those beautiful beads off the strand and I've just laid them out in the relevant bead order as you can see I've laid out my beads ready to use. I have a section here for one side of the bracelet and a section here which mirrors that for the other side. I have a centrepiece and then I have some charm drops ready to work with today. I'm going to be working with 18 gauge round wire and we've chosen a beautiful gold colour to go with the gorgeous root beer strand. I've taken around about 12 inches off the reel, but we're going to be working in smaller sections. Now, if you're brand new to wire, it really does help if you just warm that piece of wire through before you start working it. I'm going to begin by cutting around about five inches to work. And we're going to use our basic tool set to begin with round nose pliers. So I'm going to pop the tip of the round nose pliers all the way at one end of the wire. I'm going to spin that around to create the first part of a coil. Now the slower you make coils, the neater your coils will be. So if I tilt this up towards the camera, you can see that I've just started to get the first part of a circular form going. I'm then going to switch to my bent chain nose pliers. Any flat facing pliers will do. I'm going to pinch that really firmly and move the coil around using the pliers and just supporting with my non-dominant hand. Once I've created one and two circuits of wire, what I'm going to do is just switch my grip slightly, pop those bent chain nose pliers underneath and push so that the coil sits neatly at the end of that straight line of wire. You may need to just re-straighten that if it has gone slightly awry. What I'm looking for is the coil to be down at the bottom there and then we're going to add in one of our beads. Let's start with one of the smaller drops, shall we? Pop this gorgeous gold saucer bead into position and then I'm going to top that with a bead cap. I love how these two colours tone together. You've got an almost an antique gold and an antique silver with these beautiful chocolatey tones. Now to create a useful wrapped loop up at the top, I'm going to pop those pliers onto the section of wire with the coil flat to the surface and I'm going to push the wire up and away from the desk. Now you'll notice that there is a small gap here and that is to enable me to create a wrapped loop up at the top. So if I rotate the wire around like so, you can see that we get the first half, almost a shepherd's crook type shape. Pop those pliers back in and we'll take that tail of wire all the way over the top. Now I'm making an oversized loop here. In the finished piece, you'll see that the loops are much, much smaller. I wanted to make it oversized to begin with to show you how that technique works. If you need to make that smaller, you can just rotate that around and then draw that wire back across. Once you've created the size loop you're looking for, you're going to just straighten that up and then bring that tail of wire all the way around to fill that gap between the bead cap and the loop we've created. You'll next need to bring in your flush cutters Trim away the excess like so. Pop that second piece of wire away for the second dangly charm that we're going to make in a moment. And just tighten those coils up, gently pressing those two sections of wire together. And if I hold that like so, you'll be able to see that we've created a wrapped loop up at the top with a charm at 90 degrees, a little coil charm down at the bottom underneath those beads. We're going to repeat that process with the large focal bead that matches the centerpiece and a second of the same, the antique gold spacer with the antique silver bead cap up at the top. So it's exactly the same technique. On the central focal, you don't have a bead cap or anything like that. You put this directly onto a coil of wire, but the technique is exactly the same. So 
So we now have our three charms ready to work with. The technique is identical for each of those pieces. You start with a double coil, add on your chosen beads, and then a wrapped loop up at the top. So I'm just going to pop those off to one side whilst we bring in another section of wire. This again is the 18 gauge round in the gold color. And I have now around about 10 inches of wire. What I'm going to do is just warm and straighten that piece so that it's nice and fluid to work with. At one end, around about an inch and a half from the end, I'm going to turn a right angle. I'm going to use my round nose pliers to generate an oversized loop up at the top there. Draw that tail of wire all the way around. Return with those flat facing pliers and we're going to wrap around the neck of the piece coming down here, pushing that wire if you find this difficult to do by hand, I will show you a two plier technique. So I'm going to support the loop with one pair of flat facing pliers. And then I'm just going to use another pair of flat facing pliers. These are my bent chain nose pliers to take that wire carefully and neatly around that central core of wire. And when you get to that last little bit, just make sure that that sits down nice and flat. If it is incredibly troublesome for you, you can just trim that away and then smooth the end down. So once you're happy that you have a nice loop at one end, we're going to thread on our beads in the chosen order. Now, I particularly like these faceted rondelles with the oversized, almost, uh, I don't know, inner tube tire kind of effect bead. And then one of those focal central beads into position and then repeat at the other end to mirror. Once we've got all of those beads loaded, we're going to support the other end of that central section. And you can see the gap here between the hematite colored bead and the loop. We're going to try and replicate that gap, adding a right angle bend at the other side before popping in with those round nose pliers for a second oversized loop wrap that all the way around trying again to replicate the size of that loop so that it's visually matching you can just scooch that around a little bit if it doesn't quite sit right and then we're going to wrap three times around that core as we did at the other end so take the tail all the way around once and twice and then a third time over the top push that into position and then just warm that wire through now it is really important to give that wire a good warm at this stage because we want to create a lovely fluid arc with it next. So I'm going to give that a beautiful warm and then just very carefully, almost from the end of the wire, ask that to come round in a little half moon shape. Not quite a, a semicircle, but almost a semicircle. If this is a little bit jagged, pull it back out to straight and warm it through once more. The next thing we're going to do is add on our dangling charms. So I'm going to go for one small one, a central one, and the bead will match that central bead beautifully. And then we're going to go for another small charm on the other end. Once that is sitting pretty and you're happy with the smoothness of your half moon shape, you're going to support the half moon shaped wire and the central bead bar. And we're going to pull this tail all the way around the neck on what is for me the right hand side. So I prefer to do this by hand because you can get a really neat coil putting a bit of tension in. And if you started with a good length of wire, then you will finish with just enough to spare. So what I'm going to do is trim away on the back of the design. Always look twice, cut once, and then you won't have any crying involved. And then we're just going to make sure that that sits as neat and tight as possible before making sure that that end section is super tidy, just inside the back of the design there. So just get that to sit neatly. We flip this over, you can see that we've already created the central section of our beautiful Pantone root beer bracelet. The next thing that we're going to do is strand on, using beading thread, either side of the bracelet. This makes for a very flexible and beautiful bracelet to wear. Very, very comfortable on the wrist with that flexibility. Sometimes an all wire bangle can be just a little bit heavy on the wrist. So what we're going to do is I have around about 16 inches all together 
of the beading thread. So I'm just going to cut that in half and then I'm going to pop one of those halves, so that's around about seven or eight inches. I'm going to pop that all the way through and just get those two end sections to marry up before just very gently pushing that beading thread together so that it's nice and firm. I'm going to thread on one set of beads now and then you can repeat at will on the other side. So I have my bead cap to match that which we used on the charm. You can obviously use whichever order you prefer but I've gone for one of the large faceted crystals followed by one of the beautiful chocolatey golden uh, root beer colour pieces and I'm just going to thread all of these on in the correct order for me, the order that I would like to see. You can obviously change that up but I've slightly graduated down in size starting with the largest of those faceted crystals graduating down to the smallest on the underside of the wrist. So pull the feature bead down into position and then finishing off with that lovely cross drilled oval faceted bead. So at the far end of the piece I'm just going to create a very simple loop. So I have my small crimp and I just need to turn that around on itself. Now, sometimes turning that around on itself when you don't have something in the end can be tricky. So you can use a piece of wire or you can just pop that through something that you're working on just to keep your place. And you'll need to turn those ends over and just pop them back through until that comes out and then you can just tighten that up. You may prefer to use pliers to make that nice and taut, but we're looking to get a good amount of tension through. So I'm just going to grab my trusty pliers on the far side, flip that around, and then pull that tight until it sits. Now, the amount of tension that you need means you will want flexibility in those beads. So we're just going to draw that crimp away slightly and I'm going to pop a crimp bead on this in a moment, so I need a little bit of a gap. So I'm just going to crimp that nice and flat. Some people prefer to use crimping pliers, which will be a double action. My preference is a single action. So what I'm going to do now is pull that beading thread back at a sharp angle and trim away the excess like so, with those flush cutters before popping on. And at this stage, if you wish to remove your helping hand you absolutely can. So I'm just going to whiz that all the way through so that that comes off the end before popping that crimp cover into position and closing up. I think this is every designer's least favourite thing to do but let's close that crimp bead cover up nice and firmly so that you get a lovely professional finish. What you will need to do then is repeat on the other side with your second section of beading thread. Add your beads in the correct order and then repeat exactly as you did on the one side. So now we've completed matching sides with our beautiful wire centerpiece. All that remains is to add a clasp. Now you can add your clasp of choice or you can take a small section, say around about three inches of that 18 gauge round wire. We're going to warm that through and make a very simple and quick J clasp. Jesse James beads have an amazing range of beautiful, beautiful clasps that you can work with. So the choice is entirely yours. What we're going to do is show you very, very quickly how to make a small J clasp. So we're going to make sure that that end is trimmed away nice and flush. And then we're going to turn a very tiny, very small little circle on one end. The tinier, the better. So I'm going to just pull that all the way around. It's not a complete circle. It's almost like a P shape. What we're going to do is give that a really hearty squish between some flat facing pliers to make sure that that shape is nice and firmly set. And then I'm going to smooth some heat into that wire before we turn a beautiful arcing shape. Let's just move that out of the way for a second. I'm going to just turn a beautiful arcing shape above that small circular form. Again, almost like a shepherd's crook. We're going to make sure that that's nice and flat. If you need that to be smaller, 
we can just rotate that around the centre of those pliers. And then what we're going to do is pop those pliers underneath and create a very small and gentle bend. Grip hold just past where you made that bend and push upright and away from the desk. And then what we're going to do is another wrapped loop. So we're going to rotate, rotate around until you get that first half of the circular form. Hold that in position, draw the wire around and across. And before you do anything else, before you finish off that wrapped loop, we're going to find the loop that we created on one side of that bracelet and just draw on the beading thread so that it sits in the circular form we created. I'm then going to support that circular form. Let's just straighten that up slightly. Draw the tail all the way around a good couple of times, two, maybe three times, depending on how large you made the space. Just going to tighten that up slightly before trimming away any excess of wire. Again, look twice, cut once, and then there's no sobbing to be done. And what we'll do is we'll just tidy up that coil like so. Squish it down and you have a very useful, instantly functional, small clasp to work with. So you can reform that slightly if you need to. Now, if it doesn't fit through the loop that you've left at the other end, then you can always add in a jump ring or a split ring. Let's have a look and see what we've got in our box of tricks. So we do have a lovely jump ring just here, which we can add in. It's also a good way of extending the length of your bracelet. So we're just going to open that out. Pop this on the end of the bracelet that doesn't have the clasp. I should be a professional and show you that with two pairs of pliers rather than doing that by hand. Close that up. And then you have a slightly larger version of the bracelet. So there's one without an extension and there's one with an extension. I hope you've enjoyed this Root Beer Bracelet wire class today. I know that I have. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Jesse James Beads are available in the United States at www.jessiejamesbeads.com. In the United Kingdom and Europe, Jesse James Beads are available at www.jessiejamesbeadsuk.com.